After you've installed Production Assistant, you should see an icon that looks just like this on your desktop. This is the shortcut to the application. For best use, I recommend that you either leave this on the desktop or you drag it down to the Quick Launch Toolbar. So we're going to drag this down to our Quick Launch Toolbar here in the lower corner. We're going to place it right next to the Sony Vegas icon. Now we have this launcher. We can leave this on the desktop if we'd like. In my case, I like a clean desktop, so I'm going to delete this in the recycle bin. So let's just delete that shortcut. And let's launch the Production Assistant for the first time. If you haven't licensed Production Assistant, you're going to need to do that, and it will come up with your uh, license key request here. You'll just simply copy paste your license key in. So here is the Production Assistant GUI, or the Graphical User Interface. Now notice we have not launched Sony Vegas yet. This is one of the great things about Production Assistant is we can actually build our project before we ever open up the Sony Vegas software. So we're going to pre-build a project right now just to give you a glimpse of what can be done with the Production Assistant software. The first thing we need to do is we need to select which template that we want to work with. And I have a variety of templates here. We're going to choose this 10 cut 60 second segment as our template. And we're going to give it a project name. You'll need to name your project before you begin. We'll call this Golf Test. And here we're going to tell it where we want it to store that project. We may want to store that off on a LAN or other network system or perhaps somewhere else on the local computer. So here's where we'll access that. You can make a new folder anywhere on your network that you'd like to. I'm going to cancel out since I want it to go from this system here. So now we're going to go in and we're going to choose the files that are going to be part of our project. You'll notice here it says files to replace media slugs. Now if you're in the broadcast industry you should already know what a slug is, but if you don't, a slug is simply a blank area that's on the timeline that we're going to replace with another piece of media. So think of it as a, a placeholder on your timeline. We're going to replace the placeholder with actual media. Come over to choose Add. And here we're given a number of different files that we can look through. In this case, we're using uh, XDCAM footage. So we'll go back into this folder here, go into our subfolders. Let's choose a file here. And I'm going to just choose some files at random. I don't have anything particularly in mind. And we'll click Open. And here are our files. Now we can tell it in what order we'd like these files to function. So in other words, it might be that we want this particular file to come first in the line, or we want it to come last in the line. Simply by using the up, down arrows, we can change the priority or the ordering of the files. This probably is fairly important to you because it's in this order that we will be replacing the media slugs. Let's choose OK. And it tells us that it already has that particular file name in there. That's OK. We're going to overwrite it. Choose Yes. You'll notice that it launches Vegas Pro 8 software. I'm going to take just a moment for Vegas Pro 8 to launch. And then it's going to come up and tell us that it's replaced 10 media slugs with 10 pieces of actual media. And our project is effectively built. So we see here it says 10 out of 10 media files replaced. Choose OK. And we can see here that we sure enough have actual content on the timeline. Now you'll notice that as this comes up, it's got a bunch of other media on the timeline. This is one of the benefits of Production Assistant. It sets it up so that our project is already built before we even get started. So to get an idea of what we have here, let's press the W key to rewind. And you'll see here that we've got Simpty Bars with Tone. It then goes to two seconds of black. And here comes our show. So here we've got our show built just simply from the template. Notice that a lower third comes in there as well. It's because we've got lower thirds in there as part of our template document. We'll look at how to build these templates for your projects or for your particular station or corporation a little bit later. So 
So without really going very far, you can already see how Production Assistant is going to save you time. If you're building segments or packages that are repetitive and use the same bumper stock or use the same in and out pieces for your various segments, or maybe you've got a, a web show that's going up on YouTube or Vimeo or some of the other user-generated content sites, and you simply want everything to come together with this template, you can see immediately how well this can work and how it can save you a lot of time. Building the templates is where you're going to spend a little bit of time, and we'll come to that in just a little bit. But before we go any further, let's have a look at the overall uh, GUI for the Production Assistant tool. Now in this particular case, Production Assistant is up in one of my docked windows. I'm going to tear it off just so that we can have a, a real good look at it here. And we can enlarge this a little bit. In the Production Assistant tool, we have three primary windows. Source media, in other words, where does it come from? Processing, what do we want to do to it is basically what this tab does. And then finally, target output, where do we want it to go? So it's fairly simple in concept. Where does it come from? What are we going to do to it? Where does it go when we're done? Up top, you'll notice that we have a, a small toolbar here. We have a process button, which will process all of the different functions that we have set up here in the various presets or that we've added to our project. So for instance, if we want to add some things to our project, we'll click Add. Maybe we want to reduce interlace flicker, choose OK. We want to convert um, 4x3 media to widescreen, choose OK. And here we get to choose how we want that to function. So in this case, we'll choose reduce interlace flicker. We want to convert it to 30p, and we're going to convert 4x3 to widescreen. We're not going to work with selected events. So now let's remove Reduce Interlace Flicker from our Process tab here, which is Remove. And when we click this Process tab, everything on the timeline or everything in the bin will be processed with these two processes. Moving off to the right, we have a channel split. This tool is fabulous when you're dealing with DV or HDV or XDCAM footage or anywhere where you might have your channels split. This is particularly important for broadcasters where you might have all of your NAT sound on channel one and all of your dialogue on channel two. Or maybe you've got it set up so NAT's on one, interviewer is on channel two, dialogue is on channel three, and maybe you're not using channel four, but this will allow us to split those channels out into separate one or two or three or four mono channels, making it much, much easier to process that audio later on. Next, we have normalized track. This will normalize all the audio on a given track. Here we have removed track gaps. This allows us to throw together a rough timeline with lots of rough gaps or with, with open areas on the timeline, and it will remove all of those different track gaps. Here we can automatically create crossfades between all of the different media that's on the timeline. Here we have a simple duct. This is a duct that allows us to do voiceovers very, very quickly. And we have an advanced duct, which gives us some other options for our voiceovers. Next up, we have archiving our project. This allows us to save off all of our project with the media and any nested veg files, lower thirds, or any other tools that we may have invoked in the process of our project. Next, we have a photo montage tool. This is a creative tool. This allows us to create photo montages with moving photos over top of each other. Next up, our motion tool. This is very similar to the photo montage tool, but instead of creating photo montages that fill the screen, it allows us to put media of different aspect ratios on the timeline. And then finally, our lower thirds tool. Now, we're going to go back and inspect all of these different tools individually, but I wanted to do a, a quick go through of the different features on the GUI so that you know how to use them. All of these different tools that you see in the application can also be placed up on the Vegas toolbar, and you'll see that that's how I'll use them through most of this training process. So let's dig in and look at some more features of the GUI. So we've looked at our source media already as we've been bringing things in. And it simply invokes this, this dialog here. This allows us to choose media that we want to process. You'll also notice that we have use current project as source. What this means is anything on the timeline becomes our source media. If we leave that unchecked, we can actually process media before we ever open up Vegas or without opening up Vegas. This is kind of a batch processing system. So let's go to one of our drives here. And it might be that we want to go in and grab some, some footage here. We'll just grab, say, three or four or five files, choose Open, and place them in the bins. Now we've got these five files. It might be that we want to add a station bug to everything that we've got here. So let's remove the widescreen converter. 
just going to remove that. And image overlay, we're going to choose an image overlay. And we can go in and choose which image we're going to put in there. Currently, it's looking for this vast overlay, but we might want to change that. So let's go look for one of our other tools here. I'm going to grab this school bug and throw that in. And there's, there's my bug. Now, currently, that's going to lay over the full project because it is a full-size bug. I haven't created it as, as a uh, small lower corner bug. I can choose to have it add across the entire length of the video at intervals, or I can distribute it evenly over the length of the entire video. And maybe I want to display it, say, five times over the course of 10 seconds, or maybe five times over the course of, say, 30 seconds. So here we can input whatever our time level is going to be. We might want to offset that so that it doesn't come in until we've gone into the video by five seconds. So if we now click the OK button, and click the process button. It's now rendering those files out so that everything that we're working with now has those processes overlaid on top of them. We can see here those files coming into play using the timeline as source. So this is a great way to add a station identifier or maybe a copyright symbol or an animated lower bug to your media so that you're protecting it from illegal use or making sure that nobody uses your media without it being marked or watermarked as your media. So that's just one of the things that we can do inside the tool here. But let's get back to the GUI quickly. Let's cancel out all those changes that we're doing here. It comes in and tells us that it's cancel, canceled all of that. Now, let's look at the target output tab. We'll be looking at this more deeply later on, but this is a batch process tab, and this is very handy for broadcasters and for uh, standard users that are using maybe corporate work or wedding work. What this allows us to do is it allows us to take our project timeline and output it to a number of different places. For instance, it might be that you need to output to XDCAM, you might need to output to the web and to a DVD all at the same time. So by selecting this XDCAM archive, web delivery, and DVD with AC3, it allows us to create three completely separate file formats. So it might be, if you're a broadcaster, that you need to archive this to XDCAM, or you need to print back to XDCAM, or you're going to print it to your media server. Maybe you've got a media base or a news pool type of a server, and you want to print it over SDI to that server. At the same time, you want to be able to publish a web file to your website so that viewers on the web can watch it on your website. And then finally, it might be that you want to output it to a DVD or to some other uh, disk media, optical disk media device for delivery or maybe for commentary or something throughout the station or throughout your corporation. So this allows us to do a one button process of all these different file types. And you'll see that there are several different templates. And again, we'll come back and look at each one of these features a little bit later on in the production assistant tool.